Sciences at RIT, and we've got an interesting story for you today. So uh, today we're gonna start working with uh, some water drips or ripple tanks, and it's kind of got an interesting story and some interesting characters. It uh, became, to my knowledge, with this textbook, and I'll put a cover on there, and this is uh, a textbook uh, in physics that's been illustrated, or the images have been taken by Bernie Zabin, who's a very famous uh, photographer who started uh, photography in 1923 under Man Ray, uh, also a very well-known photographer in his own right. So uh, Bernice Abbott uh, was called in to take some pictures for science by uh, some researchers at MIT. Well, it starts a little bit sooner than that because of Sputnik. Uh, in uh, 1957, October 4th to be exact, uh, Russians sent up a Sputnik uh, satellite that went around the Earth and beeped a few times, uh, actually beeped for a couple of days. Uh, and, and this really got the United States really worried about the lack of science. So uh, things came to a head and uh, a tremendous amount of money was put into science education. Uh, and out of this was this, uh, P uh, S S C committee, which actually stands for uh, Physical Science Study Committee, which was formed uh, in 19, uh, oh geez, probably 1958, right after Sputnik. A ton of money was put into this, and they said, we need better scientists, we need better physicists. Uh, how are we gonna get them? We need to start making better high school physics books. So uh, Bernice Abbott was, was hired to do these shots, and uh, she was a hell of a good photographer, and she did strobe, strobe photographs of bouncing balls and what we're really going to talk about today is her ripple tank photographs which are here on the back of the book and i will put some scans in this uh, video so we can see some better pictures of that but um so i've seen these shots my whole my whole life and uh it occurred to me that I, at some time i should do some of these myself and um so i've had that on my list for a long time and uh now that we're all quarantined at home i said okay we're gonna get we're gonna get out the bernice abbott uh, books and we'll, we'll look at some of those pictures and uh see what what we can do with that it turns out that i actually reproduced a lot of these these pictures um probably about 10 years ago and i thought oh i gotta you know i actually built an apparatus for doing this but never got around to tuning it the way it needs to be tuned and uh, taking the pictures the, the way i really should take them so uh, in this particular project, I brought in some Arduinos and uh, to make little drips so we can, we can produce those little drips. And actually I have a, a ripple tank that was given to me years ago by uh, a physics teacher that was cleaning out some closets. So uh, I'll, I'll show you that, what that thing looks like. And um, the, the project starts by, uh, to replicate this project, what I did was I took a sheet of a film and put it in a shallow pan of water, uh, dripped some, some uh, water in that pan and set off a, a high-speed flash, which was just a, a speed light uh, with a little bit of uh, tape on the cover of it to bring it down to about a quarter inch across um, opening. Because you really want the light source to be a point source um, probably about two meters away or six or so feet away from your, your film. And the results are quite striking. It's really pretty interesting, um, but you got to keep in mind that you're shooting a negative uh, in about two centimeters of water or a centimeter of water. And uh, it takes about 10 minutes to process that. And you're like, wow, this is really great, except I want to do this digitally. So um, I had to figure out a way of getting rid of the film. Uh, kind of interesting though, because in the early 80s, uh, I had the chance of uh, actually seeing Bernice Abbott's original prints of the Ripple Tanks. And they, they actually were shown here in Rochester, New York. And they're, um, if I remember right, they're about two feet across. And as I looked at these, these ripple patterns, I'm like, wow, these are, these are beautiful ripple patterns. Um, but uh, in, in the big pictures, they're covered in dust. And I'm like, you know, I always thought that was like a bad printing error in the books or whatever but the actual negatives are, are really covered in dust. And, uh, and through my experience photographing water, I realized that if you shoot these in a room uh, with dust in it, the dust will end up on the surface of the water and uh, will show up on your negatives. 
be a problem. So that's one of the things we're going to look out for as we go and uh, replicate some of these, these pictures. So um, first, we put a pan of water uh, with a sheet of film down. Uh, we do a flash on that, and we realize that it, it works great, but we need something better. Um, to do it digitally, we have to replace that film with a ground glass. And if you don't replace it with a ground glass, what you do is you're able to see your light sources. And your light sources uh, are actually, um, you can actually image them in the camera. Uh, and the result, results aren't that great. Uh, to get around that, I first said, well, I don't want to actually make a ground glass, uh, piece of ground glass or polish a you know, grit and, and make a, a ground glass for this. I'm just going to use a piece of uh, rice paper. So put a piece of rice paper in there. And you can actually see the ripples in the rice paper as uh, it absorbed the water and it looks pretty horrible. So to get around that, I'm like, okay, I really have to do a uh, 400 grit uh, aluminum oxide to, uh, to grind uh, little scratches in this piece of glass. And it, it actually works out pretty well. So what I'm doing is I'm actually imaging the, uh, the camera is pointed at a mirror, which then in turn points straight up towards the, uh, the ground glass. So any of the drip patterns are, uh, that are formed above the ground glass, a little pan of water, are now imaged uh, because I'm photographing the ground glass. So instead of using a negative, I can use a digital camera and the results become much, much quicker and easier to, to collect. So um, in this particular project, I'm using uh, three uh, different 10 watt LEDs. And these are um, pretty, pretty hefty LEDs and they give off a lot of light. And I wanted a lot of light because I'm going to be using a uh, couple different high speed cameras to record uh, the action here so we can, we can get some cool pictures. Um, the problem is that I'm using a red, green, and blue LED. Uh, most people don't realize that digital cameras don't see red, green, and blue with equal intensities. So I have to put a variable resistor on each of the LEDs and, uh, and I have to bring the green and the blue LEDs uh, way down in intensity. So they're about matched. Um, without this, without matching their, their intensities, uh, the color really is whacked and I can't, I can't get uh, three, three colors that are about equal intensity. So kind of an interesting thing about digital cameras. Um, so after I put variable resistors on, we're ready to go and uh, I'll be happy to show you some of the results here. Um, kind of this is a, a pan of water that's, that's about 10 inches by, uh, oh, maybe uh, nine inches or so. And it really needs to be a bigger pan of water with a bigger view and um, some more lights and stuff. But I don't know when I'll actually get around to, to, to uh, modifying that. But so here's the project. Uh, it's kind of a fun thing. And I uh, hope, hope you enjoy it, and uh, it's pretty easy to build. Maybe you'll want to build one and have some fun with it. You really don't need an Adreno for this, but if you want to control your flashes or if you want to control your, uh, your drips, um, build an Arduino. It's really easy to do. Um, so. Okay, let me explain the apparatus here. It's, uh, it's on the back porch studio at the moment. And uh, up here I have a drip, the drip rig from the double drip system and the reservoir, and it's just resting on the top of this piece of wood. There's uh, three 10 watt LEDs, an RG and a B one here. And when I cause a drip, what's going to do is, uh, it'll make a drip, it's just a single drip set up right now. And then these three lights will go on and they will the drip will hit this little pan of water and that pan of water will act like a lens uh, with those three LEDs. So if I angle it to the bottom here, we'll trigger it a few times when the light is on and uh, we'll see what happens. So here I'll trigger it and it's set up right now for uh, one second with the LEDs on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those LEDs up as the flash. Um, and, and they're going to be set to uh, a thousandth of a second or a little bit less. And I'll time it so I get some really cool ripples in the water at the bottom. And uh, we'll have some fun with this particular setup. So kind of fun with uh, programming, uh, some LEDs and uh, kind of some uh, waves and things like that. So it'll be a fun one.